It's Wednesday, March 6, 2013. This is the 404 Show on CNET. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Scott Stein. And I'm Ariel Nunez. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Justin Yu is a little under the weather today. Maybe he knows something we don't because apparently there's a weather crisis happening in the Northeast again. Oh, man. You know, why does this keep happening? Why does it keep happening? I walk so far to get to the train station, yeah. and I don't like this at all. It's not fun. Scott Stein here, filling in for Justin. I just real quick want to congratulate you on your uh, on your new uh, son. Oh, thank you. Right? I don't know if everyone knows about that, but Scott is mm-hmm. a father again. Congrats. I Once cannot again, believe Scott. that. It's thank crazy. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. Don't do it. I'm just saying, (laughs) no, it's good advice. And I'm just saying that straight up now because I know you're going to like fall asleep during this or something because you have been run rugged. I mean, you're, you're all over the place. My wife had a a fever. I had to take over last night. So it was like, thankfully the kids weren't vomiting. So that was good. I put one kid to bed and I was feeding the other middle of the night, having like weird fever dreams about like my sister's wedding and my grandpa sitting in the corner. And then I like kept <laughs> stepping out a closet door and entering this blood red other dimension. You, you, man. So you're really doing a great job of <laughs> yeah. saying, Hey Jeff, you <laughs> and Stacy should have a child. Yeah, do it. It's fantastic. <laughs> and then you wake up suddenly in the middle of the night. You, you either really have to do something or you feel a phantom panic. Yeah. Either way, you're not going to sleep. Well, I, I sleep through everything. Actually. That's not true. My, she keeps poking me awake, but you still always feel like, you know, the first five minutes you wake up, I don't know what year it is, I don't know what time it is, I don't know my name, oh, gosh. I'm so angry, and it's like, oh, uh, and she's like, go do, and I just stumble, you have to fill a bottle, and you're just feeding, and... Before kid, you know it, you accidentally turn the stove on. Yeah. <laughs> for no starts reason. pooping as you're feeding him. Oh, my always God. Always happens. You know, oh. that's, that's the truth. What I don't understand... The stomach's too small. I wake up when Marty, my dog, like, jumps, like, moves a little bit. You know, or even like just jumps off the bed for a second, just yeah. to like scratch himself or whatever. Mm-hmm. How the hell am I going to deal with a freaking infant, twenty four seven crying, going nutty? How uh, am I going to do it? I can't do it. Well, you get used to it, but it is, it is ridiculous. And then you get used to it, and then the second kid, you're like, oh, now there's two. Come on, that's it's like a resource not, management. It's, it's not fair. <laughs> game gone wrong. <laughs> it's some weird real time strategy. It's a terrible game. Because now I understand a little kid. I'm like, oh, only three things can happen when they cry. It's usually like diaper needs changed. I'm hungry. I'm annoying. Yeah. I'm just gonna bother you. <laughs> that's like God. the third random thing. God, that's. But you know, the, or like stick a pacifier in. Do the, I'm, it's not like a bad dad. Like, if you're honest, <laughs> like walk around with them, keep them involved, shake them a little bit. Them. But there isn't that much. They sleep a lot. They feed. It's so, it's such a simple thing in the beginning. Yeah. Um. And then you're like, oh, this isn't so bad. I could watch episodes of TV shows in between. But you can't when you have another kid who's, who's like who's like old. Four and a half. Right? Who's your, old. Other, your other son's old. Yeah, and he like has real conversations yeah. where I'll just be like, Dad, like this isn't what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> you just have like disappointment. It's so funny. Philosophical conversations while the other one's like pooping yeah. and eating. You're getting it in stereo right now, brother. I know. I dropped the one kid off. And I was w- w- take going to the train. I was like that guy this oh, morning. God. So well, yeah, well, I'm glad to be here. I bring up the uh, the weather stuff just because I went to a website last night that I'm sure a lot of people go to because it seems to be the weather de facto website. It will rename nameless. The weather remain website. nameless. <laughs> uh, but I, is it just me or is like? Is the only job of these sites now to just completely scare the shit out of you? Yes. Like, complete, <laughs> like to the point where you're just like, oh, I can't even leave. They, why does this website cover the weather the way TMZ covers <laughs> right. celebrity right. gossip? <laughs> I don't understand. It is, they are so thrilled that bad storms happen this year to justify the Oh, my fear. God. They're like Mr. Burns, you know, rubbing your hands together. Between mm-hmm. Sandy and yes, Nemo, yes. it's like, see? Yeah. All of these fears could come true. Right. And then... You know, they're all being named to the storms, like every single one. Like, this is Saturn, yeah, I think. Right. Come so, where, where did N through S go? Because Nemo was the big one. <laughs> and I then thought there was, was like a Thor or yeah. something. Well, there and... was a Gandalf. Oh, that's with a different so, so, spelling. So, like in an unrelated topic, weather.com is, <laughs> right. is getting the weather channel is getting to name the storms now. Did you, you knew that, right? So, they're the ones generating they're the, this. They're the official, you know, committee who gets to name these things. And it's you know, ridiculous. everyone says like, "Oh, it's just to like make hashtags," but it does make sense to do that because, y- you know, you-, you wrap your head around one name, and it's like, okay, that's Nemo. We right. can all associate this with that one name of that storm. 
And it's probably better, you know, in, in social media just to get people's inf- people information and all that stuff. But uh, it is kind of strange that they, they've been granted this sort of power. I don't like that. What, what I mean, how long will it be before it's like Storm Sully from Monsters University coming out June 9th? Or oh, like, or like Mountain the, Dew Storm right, or something Right, the, like the Cool Ranch <laughs> Taco, whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's going to happen, The Cool dude. Ranch Taco Storm. is It's like tw- idiocracy. It's oh, like, I man. tweeted that out the that, other day. I, yeah. said, I said, you laugh when you first saw <laughs> yeah, idiocracy. Yet we inch closer and closer every year. <laughs> I feel that storm cool it's, range. Oh, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna take a huge. I'm telling you, man, the water fountains they're gonna have Gatorade <laughs> in them. They're gonna have Gatorade in them. And even worse, everyone's lawns will die because we watered it with Gatorade. Right? They're mm-hmm. like, what do you mean? We don't use water. They're like, water's poison. You don't use Brondo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you've never seen that movie, check it out. It's really bad. It's really. It's bad. actually, but it, it gets. But it it makes a it makes it its better. point. It it gets better the fifth time you've seen it. My favorite, on Comedy Central at three a.m. <laughs> right. My favorite part is just the first twenty minutes when they're dealing with all of the consolidated businesses. Like what is it? The Carl's Jr. ATM. Yeah, for sure. The way they're dealing, you're just like yelling at it, and it, it's like I forget what it says. It's like have a nice day, screw off. Right. Because he get na- a Carl's Jr. Here's your money. Do you want health insurance or whatever it was? It's so funny because Mike Judge. You know, when I first saw the movie, I was like, man, this is just. Uh, I, he's, his heart's in the right place, but this is just so stupid. And then you watch it again, you're like, oh, my God, he's brilliant because he's he just took it a step further. He's like, you just didn't think far enough into the future. It's great. Did you ever see a similar thing, like, to kind of collect on iTunes? Did you ever see that Onion Future News special that they made? No. It was like that, a downloadable oh, that's video. That's smart. I wanna, uh, how did that go? Uh, it's great. It was like I think it's like two bucks if it's still out there, but it's like... It's very much an idiocracy thing. It's ridiculous stuff. It's just stuff. like news from the future. Yeah, and it's like blitzing you with that t- ridiculous, intense, like it feels like a news feed from idiocracy, and it's just nonstop absurdity. Yeah. Um, and it's great. I, but I, I think, that, yeah, it's like idiocracy kind of I'm t- We're headed out. there, man. It's not going to happen in our lifetime, but it will. Uh, I, uh, yeah, no, I believe it now. Um, and I, my main literature is Twitter now, which is to, and Moby Dick. But that's well, I, I heard about your alternate. Moby Dick tirades the other day. What I don't, so Twitter's starting to get. It's Twitter's probably going to be the reason we head into that future. Yeah, it feels like the main. It feels mainly responsible because nobody communicates on Facebook. I don't think. No, I don't. I, I think don't. that's kind of over. It's, but Twitter, you, you get some really real attempts at communication, and it's very upsetting. Yeah. All the time. Well, it's understandable that weather.com gets to name the weather storms, right? Because uh, we actually named asteroids. We're in the business of naming oh, yeah. asteroids now. So we named that one that passed us by. That was Sharon Stone. Oh, I didn't even know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love yeah. it, though. Which is a smart, it was a better name. than like AD 359B, yeah, whatever exactly. the hell it was called. So that made sense. We're going to name them as they come. That's they, good. You know, they're, they're sort of spread out, though. Next, when is the next, next one? will be Rolling Stone, probably. The next one will be... Yeah. <laughs> well, we said we... Well, oh, no, you said Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone. Well, Oliver it's funny Stone, cause we, they, because the composition of that, that rock was mostly stone, they said. They said they described it as stone, so that's mm-hmm. why we gave it the Sharon Stone thing. Um, are they usually... Are they metal? They're usually, like, iron and yeah, like copper or something. Iron. Yeah, And ice. Oh, no, ice is a, a comet. Comets, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I bring up the whole weather thing cause I was like, man, what, where do, where do you go for your weather? And I know it's like this, it's sort of like a silly conversation, but I really was like, you know what? I can't go to this website anymore cause it's too much. It's overkill. <laughs> do you know where I go? Twitter. You go to Twitter for <laughs> weather? Kind of, oh, <laughs> no, how could you do that? I, I almost do. I do in the morning check Twitter to see what people are saying, like if we're dead, you know, if there, if there was like a war or some disaster happened in the immediate vicinity. Yeah. You just check and you're like, seems like everything's fine. If there was something really <laughs> terrible this yeah. morning, you Twitter would be my react, collected yeah. people I follow would have said something. But also, I just do. I mean, I swipe down on on the iPhone. So I just, just go get the, your weather there. I go with the eh. yeah. I, I either was a, do the I, uh, the Yahoo one or yeah. Weather Channel. Well, it is Weather Channel. I thought it was Weather Underground. See, no, it's so lame. I go to the Weather Channel app, but it's r- delightfully clear yeah. of. Um, Fear warning, fear right. mongering. That's the thing, man. You know, you used, you used to just be like a weather alert, and now it's just like someone panicking. They play that. <laughs> yeah. They play that sound. They just yeah. play like a, a woman shrieking. You're like, oh, what, <laughs> what, what, what is that? 
Everyone says weather underground. That's like the way to go. That's like that's like when weather used to be cool, man. <laughs> <Right>. the weather <laughs> underground. That's like you know old school weather. They haven't yeah. sold out yet. They, they <laughs> haven't <laughs> sold out to the man yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they still use a you know a weather vane. Hipster weather. <laughs> it's hipster it's weather. It's all hipster weather. <laughs> They're um, old school. I like that. It's just like a guy in a hat. Yeah. Just like, hey. <laughs> and that's it. There's no temperature. All yeah. right. So if you have any advice for uh, weather stuff, let us know. I want to talk about uh, video games with Scott because yep. uh, we got to do that when Justin's not here. Last time you were on here was after the PS4 event. We had Frustic here. Oh, yeah. Justin was quieter mm-hmm. than I've ever seen him before. <laughs> he I, doesn't like video games at all. It's so weird. He, he doesn't it, ever. He claims that he, what does he say? He used to play like Street Fighter in the arcades, yeah. mm-hmm. but that's like saying I used to eat McDonald's. I feel like, like something I would say. I feel he feels too young to like. Oh, no, no. Have... He's, he's, he's like 29. I still feel yeah. like. He's old enough to know what I guess so. Street Fighter was like. He in probably the played him in the arcades like. And he's probably when killing he was like people. Five. Yeah, or he's something. probably destroying people. Yeah. For sure. Uh, but I bring that up because I got a chance to check out. Um, the Last of Us. I didn't get to play it, but I saw like oh, a yeah. good demo of it, cool. and a demo that I had never seen before. And I learned a lot more about the story. So for people that don't know, The Last of Us is a game being developed by Naughty Dog, the guys who do Uncharted. Yep. And Uncharted is a very—I'm sure everyone's familiar with that franchise. But Uncharted is very lighthearted for the most, po- you know, for the most part. You do shoot people the whole game, but it's like this, you know, it's PG-13 fun. sort it's of thing. Killing. There's no blood, right. and there's none of that, and it's just, oh, you're after a girl, and she says something yeah, funny, and you're exactly. hanging by a it's, limb. It's and, Indiana Jones. Right. It's, it's Indiana Jones style exactly, uh, exactly. adventure. Last of Us, not the case. It is a much darker game. It's a survival horror game set in a future. Now, do you know the story to The Last of Us? Because I found out some of it yesterday, and I want, I'm only bringing up the game because the story is unique enough for me to really give a crap i don't i just i just it feels like a lot of the apocalyptic right you think like oh, plague, it's a zombie outbreak or something yeah, like, like a that. plague scenario so get I, and this that's kind of all i know get this this is crazy and anyone will appreciate this it's a fungal outbreak okay so there's like this weird fungal epidemic hmm. that takes over and turns people into these like walking mushroom people and that's what that's the you know, sort of uh, That's weird. dystopian, you know, future that happens, okay. right? So I was talking to one of the, the, so the guys who worked that, on yeah. the game yesterday, and he said that they, the, the guy who came up with the idea was watching uh, Planet Earth. Remember the, the you know, yeah. documentary? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gorgeously shot. There was a section, I guess it was the rainforest. I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You're talking about the ants. Right. And those spores. Right. And the ants were being infected mm-hmm. by this fungal mutation yeah. that was not only entering their like bloodstream and doing it was making them do things it they, was changing who they were as ants they climb to the top mm-hmm. of of vines and then they the fungus sprouts out of their head and spills more spores out to right all of and them. that's mm-hmm. the the Crazy. idea behind these uh these guys in the last of us is that there's this fungal outbreak that not doesn't attack insects like it does in planet earth yeah. it attacks humans and that to me is just awesome that's, that's a great cool. idea yeah, a, because you always oh it's always some stupid monkey that gets that bites some kid and that's the end of the world right this is so much more i'm going to say it believable or in a world where or, it, or it's an interesting space exactly it's, it's not as believable in... but it's nice it's a fresh take it's a it's a it's a newer idea yes right so, I mean, so some of these guys, so they call these the infected, and there's, like, different versions of the infected, and, you know, you get to see, like, their progression through the infection, and they get to a point where they're blind because the fungus, like, takes over their face, and they can only make these weird, like, clicking noises, like, wow. uh, like almost like aquatic dolphin sort of, like, like, weird that sort of thing, and it's creepy. That's great. The demo I saw yesterday was awesome. So I'm really looking forward to this. It, did you know it got delayed? It's, it was supposed to come out May 7th. Right, where is it now? June 14th now. Oh, but that's not too far. That's not too far, but that's like after E3. Yeah. Why do they? I just, uh, selfishly, I'm, I'm, I'm upset about it. Of well, course. yeah, it'll be exciting to see it come. Those are the types of games that I was expecting would happen last year for the PS3. Those are, I mean, those great cinematic games yeah. are w- what makes the PlayStation run. For sure. And, and I you feel get, like we haven't had them in yeah. about two years. It's crazy. What's crazy, too, is, like, when you really think about it, what are, I mean, Last of Us, God of War, 
These are all PS3 exclusives. Right. I think they, the power's in their corner when it comes to exclusivity now. I mean, when you look at Xbox... I think so, especially like, this right, year. And beyond right, as well. For sure, beyond. Yeah. I mean, they've. who do they have... What does Xbox have? Gears of War is coming out in two the weeks? The new Gears of War? But they, they keep diminishing. It's like... Yeah, they keep losing it. They keep the writing losing staff stuff. on the new Gears of War game is interesting. They went for, like, high-end... Yeah. Writers. Did you play any of that? No. It's uh, it's Gears of War, but I, I I don't know. I don't want to pass final judgment. The game comes out in about uh, two weeks, so we'll, we'll wait yeah, for that. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to get excited about that because it feels so iterative now. Like there was a time when a Gears of War sequel felt really exciting. I think that was Gears of War two. I think Gears of War three was really good too. It was really good, but I remember the excitement for Gears of War two was like the I felt like it was the high point. Yeah. And Gears of War three, you were like, "Oh, naturally, it's back. It's going to be great." But and now this one's like the prequel that sort of tells the story of you know Baird and the other dudes. And, and what happened to? I mean, Microsoft usually had a couple of new ideas and games yeah. every year. You had um, Alan Wake, and you had um, Alan Wake. Alan Wake was great. Yeah, I love that game. They always had something like that that they would come out with, and then they just fell into the um, into the fable Gears of War Forza. Yeah, I don't know. Repetition. It, it's definitely upsetting. I think they were able to nail uh, a few of the indie stuff, a few of the indie games. Yes. They were able to grab some of those uh, and have exclusive releases with that. But, you know, Braid eventually made its way. Limbo eventually made its way Fez. to the Sony. Is Fez I'm mean, sorry, go- no, I thought you meant Xbox with Fez. No, sorry. Yeah, I, did Fez ever make it to PS3? No, no. no. Okay. I was talking about the, the great ones right, right. on the Xbox. Yeah, yeah, no, that didn't make its way. So, you know, um, it is, yeah. we'll, we'll see how that works down the road. But going back to The Last of Us, it's, I'm really sort of digging, you know, uh, where, where they're going with that, with the whole sort of uh, biological fungal thing. Isn't, that's cra- isn't that crazy? Yeah, I think it's, it's great. It's pretty wacky, right? I mean, they just need to keep thinking of, they need to, it's their role to think of interesting studio like game ideas yeah. because I feel like that's where I want to go with it. In fact, I just hope that they stow enough of those great ideas away for the PS4. Uh-huh. Cuz I I want to see new interesting franchises for the PS4. I'm right now I haven't seen any. They're yeah. all like sequels. I was uh it's like the next big exciting No, game and I want to talk about that cuz I was I was getting interviewed uh for this I don't know if it's it's, it's going to be a documentary eventually but it's basically oh, wow. asking about where, you know, like what makes a game next gen, right? So yeah. you could say that last time around it was the graphics for the most part because it went from SD to HD. And that was like the biggest thing. Or uh, uh, or online elements. Sure, the online like becoming so pervasive. You could maybe even make an argument about the motion stuff, but I don't think that really deserves top billing. Yeah, that, so, fell, that fell into a, a narrow... Window. A weird little gutter there. So yeah. what about PS4, Xbox, whatever the hell they call it? You know, where, like, what defines next gen? Because I just also got to play go- the next God of War. That game looks ridiculous. Mm-hmm. No one's going to play that game and be like, man, I'm so tired of these old PS3 games. God of War Ascension will blow your face off. Yeah. Okay? This game does stuff that 3 didn't do, and obviously that 1 and 2 didn't do. But it looks ridiculous. So I just wonder, you know, and that game's so, you know, good at creating... Uh, such a, sco- a wide scope it makes you feel so insignificant and gives you the sense that you're playing in such a huge environment but what are like what's next what are we going to do because you saw that kill zone thing when we were there that didn't really blow me away no you know, what, what like what is it what's going to be next gen i don't think they have an answer yeah. i don't think there is an answer and that's a huge problem <laughs> chat room says micro transaction <laughs> exactly free to play freemium 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 yeah but you know what and, and then cliffy b blazinski he wrote you, you yeah. read what he wrote about micro transactions he basically said that you know like it or hate it this is the way we're going just because we have to people who don't know we're talking about micro transactions are little uh buying transactions that happen within games mm-hmm. so you want to upgrade your armor uh, Dead Space just did something in Dead Space 3 where you can you can basically, I don't want to call it cheating, but I will call it cheating because you're essentially paying real-life money to harvest and acquire assets that will allow okay. you to upgrade weapons and stuff like that. So it is sort of cheating. Uh, if microtransactions are the future, then they need to wrestle together the world's great game design minds and figure out how that's going to work without pissing anyone off. But that's the thing, you got to make it work but in a way of, that's going to be interesting. Because I feel like every time I encounter it, I get angry. Right, but but at the same time, it's an, it's a necessary evolution. It because, is necessary. Because Financially, discs yes. are going away. 
Right. And there's no reason that anybody, uh, well, you know, pe people basically need, a, they have to form a reason for people to continue to hold on to games, right? So, I, I don't know. They also have to do a really good job, speaking of which, talk about next gen, you look at, you look at tablets, iOS, Android, Kindle, you have cloud collections of content. You know, and you get the sense they're going to hold on to that no matter what yeah. device you have. Yeah. You're moving over here. Don't worry. I got your content. You can download it. Okay. Especially with all these microtransactions and add-ons and DLC, you need to get the sense that these companies are have got your back no matter what hardware you have. Right. Transferring that content from a Nintendo console to Nintendo console is a nightmare. Sony, backwards compatibility, doesn't seem like it's going to happen. You got to do that because, like, what, you're going to buy all these little bits and pieces and not have discs in the future. So you want, like two generations down the line, just like a Kindle, like if you have a book you bought like five years ago, I still want to play, you know, you probably want to play your PS4 game on a PS5. Of course. It's so like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to all the money you spend on these weird little things and you realize, oh yeah, that's not available for you anymore. So I think that's it's, the concern I have. Yeah, it's going to, it's You're a tough ecosystem. Sony's in, in a little bit of an interesting situation because, or unique rather, because they... Uh, won't have the backwards compatibility from one generation to the next. You've got to imagine I really the hope Xbox. That's... I feel like Xbox will have that. I think it will. I don't think they're going to deviate too far from where they are now. I, I really wish Sony would would have a mind change on that. I, I hope that there's time because I don't like that idea at all. Yeah. Because then what do you do with your PS3 games? you got to keep your PS3 around and plugged in? I think either that or, like or... we said, it could be the Gaikai streaming weirdo MacGyver thing where you put in a PS3 disc into your PS4. The PS4 it... is like, cool, I know this is a PS3 game. Can't do crap with it, but I can, you know, unlock this streamability and from, it... uh, from, I mean, it... from, you know, the cloud. Maybe, and if it's got your save files and everything else and you can literally pick yeah. up where you left off. You can, I'm sure that, you know, look, it's been enough time for where it was this first uncharted disaster territory where everyone was like, Oh my God! How does everything transfer over? This is terrible. Things have gotten a little smoother. I want to say, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and see how it works. Look, I mean, they're smoother. not going to be able to get around the fact if it sucks, it sucks. And right. They, you know, so they won't be able to camouflage it any in any way. It's all that downloadable stuff, though, and the ability to store it that that it's makes hard. that whole mess. It's very because tough. You look at the GameCube to Wii, and you're like, oh, he plays GameCube games, which meant you just take your disc. And then your little save well, card. That was fine. And you're fine. Oh, that was fine. And now it's like this whole, you got a hard drive full of stuff. And yeah. you're like, what do I do? And I don't want to feel like I'm transferring PCs. No. Uh, don't like, even get me started. It feels like, it's like, I wanted to welcome me and say, hi, Scott, yeah. you. We've seen you, we've seen you played all these games. Don't, yeah, don't worry. Just kick yeah. back and pour yourself a drink. And we're just going to do some fun things here and get you set up. Yeah. Keep dreaming. All right. Yeah, no, that'd be nice. <laughs> uh, also news hitting this morning, uh, Valve's Steam Box. Ready for testing in about three to four months, which is uh, the, the quote from uh, Valve CEO Gabe Newell. This is, uh, this is pretty interesting because I feel like you, you go back a year ago and this was still like in rumor territory. Yeah. Um, but obviously the, uh, the Steam Box is a real thing. And it sounds like they want to start rolling it out to consumers. And, and sort of let them get, maybe get a taste of this thing perhaps before uh, the rest of, uh, of the crew gets to, to, you know, take a spin with it. What do you, but do you think, you know, my whole thing with the Steam Box is, all right, well, if it's going to plug into my TV, where am I, how am I playing this with a controller? How am I playing this with mouse and keyboard? How is that ecosystem, how is that setup going to make sense for me in my living room? I think it could be kind of great because, I mean, at CES, uh, Rich Brown and I looked at the, um, it's not out yet, but the um, Razer Edge right. gaming tablet. Which I kind of am sold on now. It's kind of great, except yeah. for the battery life. That's, right, which is That's fine. a big problem, but, you know. but the concept, it was when they, it was actually when they set it up, of all the uses, holding it in your hands with all the other stuff, I don't know, but when they set it up next to a TV and just plugged it in the dock and then had two controller ports. Yeah. And you play two player, um, you know, it was like a, it was dirt. My a dirt showdown. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. And it felt like a console game. And you're like, oh, this is just no different than a console game. And it's true. I'm not a huge PC gamer, but like you can plug in a controller and play a lot. A lot of these games are mapped the same way. Sure. They would. It's easy not, to do. But like, you're not going to plug in a controller to a laptop, your average person. 
And so if they can set that up in your living room and already Steam has a has a is you know has a good development developing interface for for TVs. Oh yeah, that heads up uh, that sort of what do they call it? Big picture. I forget big picture. Yeah, big picture. Looks great. Think, yeah, and it looked so there you there you go. And so I like that, especially if you're building a big game collection, going back to that same argument, oh, I've spent all this money to collect all this digital content, allow me to use it. And Steam says, sure, we'll use right. this box. I just worry about hardware because PC games, PC hardware, you always have to kind of manage that and manage your expectations. But maybe, I mean, a lot of games don't need the top-end hardware to play. Maybe you just kind of deal with that and upgrade it, and you kind of live with those expectations. You're like, well, it plays... I can play all these games on it, right? So I'm not going to play this one on the Steam box to the highest settings, but I'm fine with that. It's a different relationship that you would have with a console. Yes, because the console is just no brain. Oh, this is the green box that works with Xbox. I'm going to put it in my right. Thing, right? Just plug it in. It's no, it's a no brainer. Any idiot can do it. When it comes to PC gaming, there's a little savviness that sort of comes with the with the program, with the territory. You have to know what your machine is capable of doing. Right. I feel like there has been somewhat of a plateau that's developed where, you know, you're pretty much going to be okay with a top-of-the-line machine for a couple of years, but there's still these issues that pop up, and yeah. there's still problems, and that's why it's not as glamorous, maybe that's the wrong word to use, but it's as a seamless experience as it is playing on a console game. No, it's not, but it's funny. Like A lot of things you think about that used to be classic PC experiences, like patching and downloads, right. you're like, oh, yeah, we do that now, right. too. We do, we're, <laughs> we're, I mean, let's that's be honest. That's no longer, we're well comfortable with that. I can't, hate re it. I can't recall a game that doesn't get a day one patch. Yeah. You know, where it's just like, oh, then this is just 80 megabytes of crap that we just... Exactly. Worked. So you're already kind of ready for that. I think if you have a ton of Steam content, if you're that person, oh then it God, becomes so great. You have to do it. Because you're like, I know, I've, if you've like, sunk like thousands of dollars into Steam, then, you know, Steambox is nothing. Right. I, I do agree, though. Making it easy to use, I'll kind of believe it when I see it because that's not something that PC gaming has ever done. Yeah. It's you know, just, it's, you have to be into it. Uh -huh. It's not hard, but you it's not something that you're going to find immediately engaging and fun at first. I just think it's a, it's an amazing and am, amazingly ambitious uh, attempt to sort of change the tide and bring in PC gaming into the living room, which really has had no place there whatsoever for so many years. Yeah. Is something that I think is important. I don't know how it's going to work with like a real time strategy. I don't know how I'm going to play SimCity on my uh, on my right. on my TV, you know, which I want to do. You may have to. But I'm just set not... up a little card table with <laughs> yeah. like your mouse. I'm just and, not uh, that flexible. I'm snacks. not a contortionist. I can't do that yet. So we'll see. But uh, I'm I'm excited about it. I I think this is important, and people is. definitely need to. Uh, be watching to see where that where that goes. And so many of those games are now developed the same way. I think that's the key part. Like right. you look at the, a lot of games are developed now across platform. So how many games on PC like Arkham City or whatever else are really playing the same way? So you're getting a ton of these games that oh, are yeah. really console games, and they're ten bucks cheaper. Yeah. So and and Steam loves to give you fun sales. Oh my like god. Amazon. That's, that's, you know I mean, they're just. They're just throwing stuff your way. It's like, what? I can get 48 games for $7? Right, just buy it now. And what? I just have to, like, push a button? Cool. <laughs> right. This is a lot better than well, doing anything else. That's where it could get horrifically, wonderfully addictive. Yeah. As you have a Steam box set up and you're just like, I just oh, bought it's a slippery so slope. much stuff oh, this weekend. Oh, it's a slippery slope. On my Steam box. It's going to happen. That's hopefully next-gen gaming, too. I'd love to see Sony, Nintendo, and all those guys start doing that same stuff. Yeah. I don't know why they're not pushing, like... Here, let me just give you this content for a couple of bucks. Right. Sing our back catalog. Right. Like, just make those sales. Get that stuff more addictive. For sure. For sure. Well, we'll we'll definitely see where it goes, but uh, it's it's definitely an exciting time. Someone wrote in the other day and said, "What do I get Bioshock Infinite on? Do I get it on PC? Do I get it on you know?" And the demo that I got to play was on PC, and it looked yeah unbelievable. It looked great. And I know it's not going to look as good on PS on PS3 or Xbox. So isn't the answer wait and get it on PS4 slash <laughs> Xbox <laughs> no, I don't, Infinity? I don't think that's going to happen with this. Or whatever one. it is. I don't. You don't think they're going to come out with a port for that? I don't they? know, man. If they're making a PC version that looks that great, I don't know. I feel like why not make make a special just, edition? Every every game comes out with a maybe down the road. Yeah, I don't, not immediately. I, I but I don't know. We'll see. I would. I can't. Imagine waiting. So I would say you get it on the console, yeah, and enjoy it. But if you play PC games at all, 
then you get the PC version. And you have a good PC. Yeah. You know. have like a modern PC. Yeah, we of course. That's a that's a thing. That there's always <laughs> that little footnote right at the end. Just make yeah, exactly well, you know, take advantage. You never Well these I mean when they bring not, these demos in, they're like these massive alienware, right. you know, fifteen thousand dollar rigs that that's where it looks great. Completely, you know, would never practically fit in anyone's apartment, nor could any average gamer afford something like this. So, you know, for the people that got the money and, and want to do that, well, yeah, PC is probably the way to go. I would. It's interesting that it was demoed on the PC. That's I think oh, that, that always sort of, happens. That's always the way. That's like, it's like I a thing. I feel like it's not always the case, but uh, if they have it, if you've got it, it's the, smoke pro, it. it's the platform they're proud of. Right. You know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I want to talk. I want to switch gears a little bit. Head over to uh, to HBO and Game of Thrones. Did you know that Game of Thrones is the most torrented, pirated TV show ever? I did not know that. Or at least last year it was. The most heavily torrented TV show. And mostly, you can attribute this to the fact that most of the planet just doesn't have access to HBO. Right. So the people that can't have any legal, you know, stream of uh, a way to watch it, what, what else are they going to do? They have to steal it. Well, it's or, HBO's fault because they don't sell. I, I'm going to say it's HBO's fault. I've been pissed about this for, for well over a year. Yeah. Since HBO Go came out. It's their strategy to not sell episodes of current seasons anywhere. Mm -hmm. They make you sign up for the premium cable, which then unlocks HBO Go. So you can't buy, you can't, you can't, I always buy, if I, when, I, when I did not have cable, I would buy and catch up on episodes. Right. And watch along. Sure. If you don't have that option, well, you know, guess what? What do you, like, what are you You're going to drive do? people to do that. If, if, if you, you leave you will, people you will, with no other choice. Right. You're not going to drive people to go, oh, awesome, let me pay up for premium cable and HBO, right? Because uh, this sh one show matters enough to me. It's it's crazy. No way. It's crazy. Well, Game of Thrones comes back on March thirty first, which yeah. is only about three weeks away. And what they're trying to do this time, HBO senior vice president Jeff Cusson, he basically announced plans for the channel to make Game of Thrones available in one hundred and seventy six countries within the week of the U.S. premiere. How are they going to do that? Well, they're going to increase the rollout of HBO's online streaming service, HBO Go, which we just talked about, internationally, although it appears that the exact regions haven't been finalized. So they're basically going to attempt so, to put HBO Go where it's not available terrestrially, right? As that's a, interesting. So, so How it, does that work? You I don't know. They just over the internet. So they're going to be made some sort of like a la carte thing. Maybe it's like the NFL, the way they deal with right. uh, NFL exactly. content online when you can't. I would them. imagine because you, you charge you something. It just get some makes return. no sense because you're, look, it's yeah. not going to eliminate piracy 100%, but it's better than nothing. Yeah. And you're going to, and just think of the freaking money they're going to bring in when you give people this legal, hopefully affordable option. With great quality streaming, right? You know, internet around the country, around the world is is great in some places. It'll look great, it'll sound great, and hopefully, it's it won't be a problem. But this is the way to do it. I used to have this debate all the time, like with John Falcone or Greg Sandoval when he's here. You know, talking about this, I really want them to sell that stuff individually, right? But then there's the argument of well. That model and the money it's bringing in allows them to make the shows that they're doing. So, but it, I mean, HBO Go is awesome. It is a fantastic app, but you have to pay into this whole tier to get to it. It's a big problem. Yeah, it's it, it's not as easy. I mean, obviously, everyone would love to just be like, "Oh, I want to pick what channel I want." It's just yeah, the the wrong people own the tubes, and unfortunately, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, all right, real quick before we uh, say goodbye. We, we were talking a little bit about uh, Star Wars. Yes. So Star Wars, everyone knows the you know Lucas was film was bought by um, Disney. Whether or not you had a heart attack over that is another story. But uh, they did say that there will be a seven, eight, nine. Yes. And, and other movies. And too. other movie. Why not? Just like one every two to three years, forever. Forever, to forever, and ever, because it will never end. It's right. a franchise that will never die. Here we go, to forever. And apparently the next one already has some of the uh, original Star Wars mainstays signed on. So Lucas couldn't do this, but Disney could. Han Solo, back in the saddle. Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher. Who yes. else is back? 
You got you got to expect now that you know Mark Hamill can't be that hard to wrangle up. There's no way Mark for... Hamill's gonna play this. He, he's, he's gonna begging. play hard to get though, because like I said, yeah. he never apparently he never cashed in on the original. He 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 bypassed or you know uh, decided to not go in with the residual offer or something like that, where he couldn't. Apparently, he doesn't make money off Star Wars anymore. Is what I've heard. It's a bad deal. It's well, a bad he, deal. This will freshen his convention I also didn't uh, think they karma. Were, right. Not well, karma, but his his cachet. Yeah, well he's got it, fine convention karma. But his cachet, like he will he'll be fine for another like you know, forty years now. It's funny because he was in a recent Star Wars movie. That's how powerful this brand is. Star yeah. Wars is so hardcore and so powerful that even if you totally screwed up your original deal with the original trilogy, it somehow <laughs> came back from the, the dead. And scooped you up and, and gave you an opportunity deal. to come back in again, which is amazing. So does this mean, come on, Billy D. Williams, Lando Calrissian, why I don't, don't know, just man. make that happen? I don't know. I Like I said. That's, I, I want to see him, uh, well, he was on the episode of, um, what was the last show I saw him on, Modern Family? Oh, right. Yeah. They're playing poker. Yep. I don't bring uh, him back. Bring him back. Why not? I think Gotta have um, them doing something like old guys, older guys doing crazy things. <laughs> <laughs> like Lando and Han, what are you guys doing? They're just old now. <laughs> Get out of the back room. We they guys getting into trouble. They need to introduce some sort of sport in the Star Wars universe. Harry Potter has Quidditch. No, you already had the horrible pod racing with the ESPN. That's announcers. not a sport. Jim Nance was it? Was it Jim Nance? It was, was one that- of those. One of those two announcers. We're going to call racing a sport. It wasn't Jim Nance. That was cars. I'm thinking of. We're going to call driving real fast. They uh, really just upset tri- the entire NASCAR <laughs> nation. What do you want to call it? Like a, I don't go- know, it's a game. It's a game. Like it's a game. Bantha. Just name, make a. You know, I don't know. But anyway, Bantha Star- Polo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. I, but but that's how strong this brand is. So I don't know. I'm not a big Star Wars guy myself. I was kinda and still care. kind of am. Kind of just don't care. Yeah. It's you know I don't know. Just you know. Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford, Crystal Skull, you know, it's not everything you're going to wish for all the time. You know, getting getting what getting your guys back. It's, it, this is kind of what we hoped for with the st- yeah. sequels a while ago, yeah. or before they were prequels. But, like, you thought, what do these guys get back in the saddle? Yeah. But now it's, like, a really long time. I, I imagine they're just going to come in for, like, kind of extended cameos. You think? You know? Kind of like the Marvel movies where it's, like, you see someone just appear. Right, and has, has a scene real quick. You're right. How can how can Carrie Fisher get top billing on this film? I feel like they're going to be. How is that going to happen? They'll be like the old Jedi Council or something. Yeah. they like yeah. the, the new group will meet with the like. They'll be like in this office for sure. And they'll be like, ah, uh, <laughs> all right, you guys, you guys go do what you need to do. I mean, but I'm too old for this. You know, even the through the magic of ILM, they're still they're bikini. Still, still gonna look old, right? They're 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 old people. You wonder about the golden bikini. You, I don't want not on not on today's Carrie Fisher. <laughs> I'm not wondering at all about that. Leia, put that bikini away. <laughs> Cover yourself. <laughs> damn stop it. it. You're making a what mockery of the Empire. What like, are you doing? Mom, mom, stop it. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, that's. I'm kind of excited about that, but. All right, we'll see how that pans out. Uh, thanks for being here today, man. This yeah. is a lot of fun. I Scott... didn't get to talk about We ran out of time. Oh, uh, we didn't even make up to bring up the watch stuff. That's okay. I'm sorry. We we've heard too time. much about smartwatches. We, yeah, I guess so. And we've had our fair share of Pebble discussion on this program as well. But yeah, the, yeah, the Martian review. Read up Scott's on. Martian smartwatch review up on CNET. We'll link to that in the show notes. We got an email uh, again from Alex who's trying to help us out. We've got th- uh, 23 gigs is how big the 404 uh, archive spans. It's just audio, right? So we're looking for a place to dump that. And we don't know where we're going to dump it. But mm. it sounds filthy. But we just want to put up some data somewhere. You know? Yeah. So we're trying to figure that Post out. It in some spot. If you have an idea of how we can upload 1,220 episodes of audio only, let us know. Because uh, apparently Dropbox isn't doing it for us. Maybe there's a way internally we can do it. I don't know. I'll look into it. But if you have an answer, uh, definitely uh, keep this conversation going because it's something we're trying to do. What about uh, the Internet ASAP. Archive and all those guys? Can you can you sneak oh, we, in there? We somehow? had one of those dudes on our show a while back. Maybe, Maybe he can, can hook it up. He's got say like a, for for posterity. Like, oh yeah, I got there. a whole bunch of uh, mess of uh, space for you in the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> Just dump uh, dump twenty three gigs of four hundred four episodes there. It'll be fine. <laughs> we'll get you set up. We'll get you set up. That's going to do it for us today. 866-404-CNET is a number to call. Follow Scott on Twitter, at Jet Scott, and read all of his good stuff on the internets. 
It looks like Revis is going to get traded. Oh, no. I'm sorry, dude. I know. I'm he kind had to of... sneak in the Jet stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I did. Because exactly <laughs> I Jets. said Jet Scott. Yeah, free agency is coming soon. For commentary on the impending doom. Well, I guess <laughs> yes. it's not impending. The it's second train wreck <laughs> that is the New York Jets. <laughs> Season two. You can follow disaster. on Twitter for all that stuff. Uh, the 404 at CNET.com is our email. Get in touch with us. Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, all that junk. We're back here tomorrow. Have a good one, guys. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Scott Stein. I'm Ariel Nunez. It's the 404 Show. High-tech, low-brow. Thanks again to Scott Stein. We're back tomorrow. We'll see you.